Merlin is a really exciting piece and I know Philip is a really good player, so I'm really interested to see his interpretation. Okay, here we go. Ready for this? Oh, <laughs> let's go! As you can see, my favorite Marimba brand is there, Marimba 1. Nice. 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 Oh, ho, ho. Oh, the drop's good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Intensity at the end. That intensity at the end was very good. Okay. Wow. Good morning and welcome back to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. It's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Bradley Crowley, Sungshun Han, Scott Raider, Greg Harris, Steam P. Newberger, and Jay Carol Gilliland. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Nathan Picard. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Antan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. Today is another Let's Watch because there's a lot of Let's Watch submissions that have kind of banked up over the last few months. So I'm going to try and get through as many of them with you guys because I'm also working on a whole bunch of other projects. By the way, if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads as I upload every single week. I'm working on a vibraphone and marimba duo right now called Sword Shield, which is the same sort of style as Flying Colors, but I think a little bit more difficult, and I'm really excited to get that one out, as well as a vibraphone solo. This is something that I haven't really talked about until recently. I'm actually going to be borrowing a one vibe from my friend Joey to write a vibraphone solo for the first time. So very exciting stuff. In the meantime, we're going to be watching some videos, the ones that you guys have submitted at adamsandepression.com forward slash discord. Today we're going to be checking out the concert section of Let's Watch, not the marching section, even though I do actually have a marching episode ready to go, but it actually just got copyright claimed a couple of hours ago, <laughs> which is kind of frustrating, but I'm going to deal with that. So in the meantime, here's the first submission from Don Mega. My name's Donovan Santine and I've worked very hard the past year on playing this solo. I'm still a freshman, so there's bound to be a mistake here and there, but I'm open to all criticism. Critiques. Even if I'm not on your Let's Watch, I'm happy if you do watch it. Well, that's some reverse psychology there because you are on my Let's Watch, so let's watch. Okay, so this is the video, and as you can see, my favorite Marimba brand is there, Marimba One. Nice. 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 This is a really cool room, by the way. I really like the paintings in the background. We've got Among Us, we've got Clarinet Gang with uh, Squidward, and we've got Trumpets, The Last Airbenders. A little avatar reference there. That's really cool. But anyway, back to the performance. Uh, we've got Donovan in the middle there. We've got the Moon Chasers score on a music stand on the side. That's a very interesting place to put it. And we've got the Marimba one. Um, I think this is the Izzy. Yep, it's the same as mine, and it's got some wood rails. And the mallets look like, well, they could be anything. I'm not really sure what they are, but they're white. And I love white mallets. <laughs> but yeah, Moon Chasers. This is a piece that I haven't heard for quite a while now, so I'm really excited to hear Donovan's version. Let's go. Okay, nice roll, roll transition in. Okay. One-handed roll could be a little bit more gentle, but that's okay. Nice voicing. Could probably lift the top mallet a bit more. Now we're going to take your time a little bit more with the chorale changes, but it's good. Dynamics are good. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it there for a second. Um, that's pretty good. The rolls are all correct and the accuracy is pretty good. I would say maybe you could experiment with either speeding up the rolls more when you wanna bring out the volume or slowing it down when it's a bit softer. Right now the roll speed is kind of uniform, so it will be interesting to see if you could do that. I do like where you're placing your bars most of the time. Sometimes you are playing it on the edge, but if you can try and play more in the middle, I think that would be really nice to get just a bit more of the marimba's warmth. And I think those top notes like dun, 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 dun. It'd be a little bit more light right now because the strokes are kind of like dun, 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 dun. If you just lift them off a little bit more, uh, you might be able to make them a bit lighter, which makes them sound more like 
pew, pew, like little stars, which I think would be a really cool opener because I know the next part is gonna get pretty hectic. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty decent start, I like it. Very even laterals. Careful not to bang the bottom note too much, but yeah. Okay. I'd say you might want to try maybe just bending your knees a bit and just getting a bit lower so that you don't you have a slight tilt in your balance at the moment. The accents are good. But yeah, I think if you yeah, just try and make your mouth a bit more parallel. Good transition. Oh, nice. Try not to bang the sea. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the bottom notes are a little bit too slammy. I can hear a lot of that BOOM in the first note But yeah, you're keeping it really steady, which is good Oh, very good The fast ladder was really clean I still think you could lift all those sixes, the parallel sixes See, it's, it's very like It's good that you're bringing it out though, bringing out the top voice. Oh, that bottom note is... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that D is way too hard, like, go easy on the bottom notes. The transitions between the top and the bottom are really, are really smooth though, that's good. Still lift your right hand a bit more, like the upstroke. Yeah, like that, like that, like that. Yeah. Okay, nice. Again, the bass. I don't know what it is. Is it the mallet? Maybe it just seems a little bit too harsh. Like it's very slappy. The top mallet sounds really good. Octaves. Oh, good shot at the octaves. For this section, I'm kind of confused as to which section you're trying to bring out. It sounds like you're trying to bring out the left sometimes and try to the right sometimes. You can make that a bit more clear. Ah, uh, this this is good. Yeah. Ah, nice, a little lift there. So here, I think you could choose the voice. I think it's the top voice, right? Try and bring out the left a bit less. Ah, the way you hit that C is really nice. Not too hard, that's good. The bottom C. Balance.
Ah, good. Yeah, that's a good finish. <laughs> well done. Okay, I will say there's a lot of good things about that performance. Firstly, I'd say Donovan's playing is really accurate. It's fully memorized. And he knows the notes really, really well. You can tell, right? There was like no doubt in his mind, especially when he's switching registers. The horizontal movement is very, very clean. It seems like he's quite a confident player and I can hear the voicings quite clearly as well. But I think there's two main things that you could focus on if you wanted to take this performance to another level. The first thing is the actual strokes. So I think your right hand is slightly angled and that's why it doesn't tend to speak as well. And when you're striking the bars, it's really hard to get the mallet to come back up because you're already tilting it slightly, which gives it that sort of gravity disadvantage. So I would reckon if you could find a way to make your stance a little bit more level, either by bending your knees, maybe increase the marimba height just a little bit, just so that the keyboard's a bit more level so that you can play more flat. And that way, when you strike the bars, you don't get that gravity disadvantage. You'll be able to lift the mallet a bit more. A good way to practice this is to strike your bar, like pretend this is the bar and just lift off immediately after you strike it and try and make it as ridiculous as possible because that way when you decide to scale it down to a more realistic amount for more efficient strokes you're still lifting it quite high instead of playing down right now i think you're kind of tilting slightly and playing like this and the sound is quite like in the bar but you want to try and get it to sing out and project out so definitely try getting more air in the stroke like that the second thing that kind of relates to the first thing is the tone. And I was talking about this with your low notes. I think your low notes are getting a little bit into the slappy region. I know that it's like nice to hit the one mallet sometimes and get that emphasis on the bass. I do it all the time too. Especially with Steven's group, it tends to be much easier to get them to speak quickly. Whereas the inside mallets, you know, a lot of us find it harder to get the same amount of torque and rotation. Which means with a lot of people when they play marimba, I don't think Donovan did this too much. But some people, they just think of marimba music as like drum music and just hitting it like really hard. And they don't think about the different resonant properties of different areas of the marimba. I think Donovan did try to get some softer tones in the lower registers. And I saw sometimes he hit the bottom C really nicely. And so we just need to kind of emulate that kind of stroke. So one way you can do that, obviously using a softer mallet helps, but also... Just like what we were saying before with the stroke, instead of thinking, okay, this is my bass bar and I'm gonna go bang straight into it, which will give you this boom sound, which, you know, sounds loud, but you also hear a lot of that contact sound, that bang. So in order to avoid that contact sound, just take the mallet off the bar. And I'll kind of show you this in the background. So instead of doing something like this, just take it off the bar. probably wasn't a good demonstration but you get what I mean right <laughs> but regardless Donovan is a freshman like he said and he's prepared it really well there weren't any real mistakes like note wise so still really good if you're enjoying the video so far please give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Donovan's performance okay let's move on to the next submission Phil Karandif now I've seen Philip's videos before but I haven't seen the video of him playing Merlin and this is something as you guys know I love Merlin it's one of my favorite pieces of all time my first solo recital my first Merlin hope you enjoy your first Merlin is always the best Merlin no, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying Merlin is a really exciting piece and I know Philip is a really good player so I'm really interested to see his interpretation Let's watch. All right, here's the video, and wow, Philip, did you steal Donovan's marimba? <laughs> it literally looks very similar to the one that was in Donovan's video. It is a marimba one, is he? Well, if you look on the right-hand side, I can see some white string. Is that the bar string? Is it white? Oh, yeah, the bar string is white. Okay, so it's been restringed. That's really cool. Philip here is playing, I think, with Keiko. Is that Keiko Abe mallets? They look kind of like Keiko Abe mallets. And he's playing with a cross grip, so that would make sense. And yeah, we're going to hear Merlin. So if you don't know Merlin, it's one of the greatest uh, marimba solos of all time. It's definitely one of the most advanced marimba solos. The first movement is a chorale called At the Faint Edge of the World. And the second movement is called Time's Way, which is the famous one that everyone knows of the... Okay, let's go. Ooh, that was a really nice first note. Oh, that slide into the bar, that's sneaky. I like the pink mallet tape, by the way. Okay, he's keeping it moving, which is good. 
and then cutting it off, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. Oh, very soft. I do think you could lift the mallets off with those like soft notes just to point them out a bit more. Oh, nice swell. Okay, I like the, the uh, time to drop roll as well. It's very creative. Oh, oh, slight, slight misjudgment there, but it's good, it's good, it's good. Ah, see, he's altering the roll speed. See that? Good. Oh, very soft. He's also playing on different parts of the bar. That's very advanced. See how his hands are also really flat? Oh. Oh wow, that power. That malahite though. Oh, look at this. Nice. So you could alter the roll speed a little bit more just to get those swells to sound more like you're changing the articulation as well. But the power is there. Oh, that's good. That's good. Nice soft rolls. See how he's not rolling too fast? Oh, out of nowhere. Hey. The famous FB FB chord <laughs> in Merlin. Yeah, I like that he's taking his time with the transitions too. Because a lot of people rush this chorale so much. Oh. That was a nice dampen. Oh, the afterburn roll. And then the transition. Okay, probably could have left that to ring a little bit longer before grabbing the new ballots, but that's okay. Oh, he's got different color tape for different hardnesses. That's clever. Good tempo. Oh, the accuracy. Let's go. Accents are on point. too soon oh nice here we go ah that run wasn't right but that's okay it's getting a little bit too loud too soon this part's meant to be soft this part's not Okay, okay. Oh, look at his face, he's enjoying this. I love this bit too. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, interesting phrase moment there. Interesting. I've never seen that before. The drop's good. Nice. Okay, here we go. You ready for this? Oh, <laughs> let's go. Oh, good effort. Good effort. Missed the last two notes, but good. Here we go. <gasps> nah, nah, nah. 
okay, no, that's still uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, that okay, the octave run going up with one hand. Wow, fantastic, accuracy great. But this moment, I think, is one of the most pivotal moments in Merlin. Da -da -da -da, and it cuts off, and then bomb, bomb. Um, there isn't that much of a big rest between that da 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 cell and the dun dun cell. Um, and I think the way he walked over to the, the second part going dun dun kind of killed the tension. Notice he held it there like dun dun! And then he was like, okay, let's go. Okay, dun dun. <laughs> this is my personal taste, of course, but I would say find a smoother way to transition between those sections. Like maybe dun dun! And then Boom, boom. Just so it looks like we're still moving, it kind of just looks like a new movement, almost like a new piece. It kind of looked like the same way he transitioned the mallets from the first movement to the second movement. So yeah, small details like this can make a big difference in a piece as incredible as Merlin. Ah, oh, these chords are really nice. Now we got the mallet adjustment. Dead strokes. Are dead strokes added in the score? I don't think so. Ah, oh, great shut down there. Here we go. Nice. I, th I feel like he should let the strokes go a bit more. He's always trying to like suppress them. But they're so nice. Yeah, nice. Oh. Oh. A little bit quick on those ones, but okay. Here we go. Oh, just missed the last B flat. But yeah, great tempo. Intensity is definitely there. Great FP. Interesting. I reckon you could put more weight into that section. Like think like pious chung heavy arm stuff. But still good. Yeah! Mmm, I like the phrase. It's a little bit too much swelling in this section. I don't remember there being this many swells. Oh, this part's good. This part's good. I like the step to push, that's nice. Oh yeah! Here we go. This is my least favorite section. <laughs> it's so hard to play. Oh, you did it, you did it! <laughs> Interesting, you had a bit of a rhythm there when there isn't a rhythm. Uh, here we go, build it up, let's go, take it home! I rushed this bit so much when I went into competition. It's good that he's not doing that. Here we go, here we go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that reach! No, he's got long arms. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> that intensity at the end. That intensity at the end was very good. Okay. Wow. I love watching performances of Merlin. Like, they're honestly the best. Before I say anything, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Philip's performance, because that was 
very good. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the first movement first. The Corral, really good rolls. He's got really strong, intense arm stroke rolls. This is a technique that I don't use as often myself, but a lot of players who play, I think he's playing traditional grip, a lot of them tend to use this arm stroke technique and it works really well. It, it gives you that sort of intensity. I think you could definitely use more roll speed variation, especially um, in the louder sections, like the swells, you're trying to get the swells, right? Like, uh, you did like one of those stepped rolls that was really clever, so just more of that I think would be really cool. I think also those little notes, just making a little bit more use of that space, the because those notes are not the common factor. A lot of the time when you're playing music where those kinds of notes appear all the time, like you, if the whole piece is just soft note over and over again, of course you don't want to bring out every single one, but these soft notes are rare. So you want to kind of emphasize them just a little bit. I think that would be really cool. Otherwise the chorale was really great and the transitions between the chords was really clean. And then we get to, of course, Time's Way, the second movement. Wow, just so many good things. I think generally speaking, his dynamics are really good. Uh, sometimes getting a little bit too loud too soon. Some of the build-ups are quite long in Merlin. And I think he was just getting to, you know, forte level, fortissimo level when we're not actually at the fortissimo level yet. I have to say all of the trademark difficult sections, like the one-handed octet, the... the all of those sections really really clean uh, there was just a couple of notes that were missing and i really enjoyed it and then the only thing i would say is once again that transition in the middle from the that section i think can sometimes make or break the thing because it's the only time in merlin's second movement where there's like literally this ball of tension this huge amount of space after we've had all this like doo -doo 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 -doo, and suddenly this silence before dong dong and it's like a new tonality and everything. I think that is something that you can really explore instead of kind of going like, da -da, let's walk. Dun, dun. <laughs> it's a little bit too casual. Um, that's, that would be my opinion, I think. And then that face at the end, that face of ferocity, that's exactly the sort of energy that this movement of Merlin, I think, has because it's all about losing your sense of time and descending into further and further chaos as per the text that it's originally from. So really, really well done. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to submit your video for Let's Watch for this kind of segment, go over to agitabacuffin.com forward slash discord and submit your videos. I really like watching your performances because it really teaches me a lot also. And I'm planning to play a little bit more in the next few months myself. And I'm gonna play not just my own pieces, <laughs> probably around when my mallets come out, my signature mallets from Encore Mallets, I would really like to do a program that is not just my own pieces. I wanna play Merlin again because I haven't played a good version of Merlin yet. And yeah, I love watching all of your videos. So make sure you submit them. Finally, if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads, do so now because I upload new videos on this channel every single week. And thank you so much once again for watching my videos. I really appreciate your support so much and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.